Mark, Mark chapter 4, look here in verse 26. Come on, bro. The Bible said, He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Well, all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. The kingdom of God is always growing. Mm. Always. Whether we're a part of it, whether we're not, whether we're uh, helping to make it grow or we're not, it is, it is constantly and always growing. And it grows because God wants it to grow. Mm. Not because we want it to grow, not because it's the right thing, mm. but just because of God's will, it grows. That's right. You know, we don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know with who. It's just as growing. <clears throat> like even right now, as we sit here in this house in Fresno, the kingdom of God is growing. There are people getting baptized in, on the continent of Africa. There are people studying the Bible in Southeast Asia. There, there, are, there are people that are sharing their faith in, in Russia and in, and in Europe. Mm. I mean, the kingdom of God is just growing. Mm. Now, the reality is we don't know who's open and who's not yeah. at first, right? Mm. Our job is to be like a farmer, which is to plant the crop. Like your job is just, let, let's just open the ground, put the seed in, close the ground, and hope for the best, uh. right? I mean, that's back in the day, that's what a farmer did. Right? They didn't have a whole lot of irrigation. There wasn't any complex pesticides where they had helicopters kind of like coming in and spraying stuff. They, there wasn't this like, oh, hey, there's, a, there's a, a, little, a bunch of little baby trees at this nursery over here that we're going to transplant and replant this whole entire field. Right? There wasn't mm -hmm. any of that. Everything was about planting a seed. Mm. Right. Wow. You plant the seed every year not knowing if you will harvest at the beginning or... At the end, you don't know. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 says, What after all is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. Mm. So who's responsible for the growth? God. God. Mm. It will depend on when the crop ripens, and it depends on the weather, it depends on the sun, it depends mm. on the rain. And these are all things that we know in, 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 in the world as acts of God. Because mm. nobody can control the weather. I mean, although, you know, many conspiracy theories talk about like hydro seeding and, yeah. you know, weather manipulation and all these kinds of things. And, and there's truth to some of that. But the reality yeah. is over all of that, nobody can control the weather. Yeah. Mm. Only God can. Only God <clears throat> has complete control. Our issue is that we need to harvest the crop when it's ripe. Right. When the harvest comes, the farmer works all hours that God gives him as his life depends, it, depends on it because it does. Not only did his life, did his life depend on it from a standpoint of, hey, he's got to go sell those crops in order to buy more seed and be able to take care of different things around his farm, but also his family reap that harvest and was able to keep some of that mm. as well as if he was a Jew he had to tie the whole bunch of different things and give a whole bunch of different offerings and stuff like that on it, on it right? Mm. If you harvest too early the crop is no good mm. right? If you uh, harvest too late if we're slow to action we lose the crop because it rots right? right? Yeah. <clears throat> the skilled farmer knows when to start harvesting and what to do when he's not harvesting. Mm. Today, I want to talk through some things that we need to learn about how to bring in the spiritual harvest, right? Mm. Come on. This is a, a kind of a, a relaunch. It's a, a revamp. This is a new group, right? We've tried a whole bunch of things over the last year of, okay, we're going to do a, a, a kind of an old, like a, like a, 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 you know, a more seasoned mingles ministry and then have the, the younger singles go do something here. We're going to, do this, we're going to do that. We, we try all these things. This is, this is us bringing everybody together. Mm. Campus doing their thing and the Mingles ministry doing their thing. Mm. But the reality, these principles are for all times in our ministry. Mm. Yeah. So I just want to set things 
straight here at the outset. Come on, bro. Right? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we focused on the things that we're focused on? Because what we're interested in is forceful advancement. Come on. Mm. So the title of the lesson tonight is Forceful Advancement mm. versus Weak Wishful Thinking. Oh. Wow. Forceful Advancement versus Weak Wishful Thinking. Wow. Now, again, these principles that we're going to walk through apply to every ministry at all times. But... We're going to apply them now more than ever in this Bible talk. Amen? Come on. Amen. Amen. Point number one of these quick points is a time to plant. Mm. A time to plant. Here's the reality. If you are not working with anybody, meaning you're not studying the Bible with anybody, mm. you don't have anybody in your life that you're really molding and shaping and getting into the word and helping to become a disciple, you have one task. Mm. Come on, plant. Mm. Plant. If you have no one that you're working with, your role is to plant. Luke chapter 10, verse 2, write this down. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. If you have no one, you got to be honest with yourself and focus completely on evangelism. Yeah, that's right. The only way to get somebody to study the Bible with is to go get somebody to study the Bible with. Mm. This might seem really simplistic, and it is. Right? The longer that I do this, not even just as a living, but the longer that I'm a disciple, the more I just go, you know what? This is like easy. Wow. Now, it's not easy because Satan likes to muddy it up and make us feel insecure or we're tired or we're this or we're that. I don't like sharing time. I don't like walking around. All these different things. Trust me, guys. I've said every excuse in the book. I've felt every feeling about it. And I'm an introvert. So naturally, this is not something that I enjoy doing. Just in my own sinful nature, I naturally do not. In fact, when Ariel and I, when we, uh, before we became part of the ICC, uh, I used to joke around with her because I was like, babe, you go share your faith with them and I'll say the Bible with them. <laughs> Go. You, you go share your faith, babe, and I'll say the Bible with them. No, that was awesome. She was fired up about that, but it was sin. Because that's, now, she's naturally more gifted in the area of, of being able to interact with different people, and that's awesome. I'm naturally more gifted in the area of sitting down and building a relationship once that's all, not more gifted than her. She's obviously awesome at everything. But, uh, but the reality is, like, we all have kind of our own gifts and niche and, and way that we like to operate. But the reality is, if I've got nobody that I'm working with, what's my job? I have to go plant. Right. So how do we do this? Well, first, we've got to be honest with ourselves. Am I really working with someone to help them become a disciple? Mm. Oh, yeah, well, I get with Frankie and then... Oh, oh, yeah, Gustavo and I... No, no, be honest with yourself. Mm. Do yeah. you have somebody that you're working with, that you're working with. You might not be the one that's leading the studies, but that's your person that you're getting to come to a relationship with Christ. Right. Right? Yep. Well, Make sure you've done all your follow-ups. And then you will know where you stand. Go through your... If you don't got anybody, here's the quickest way to find out whether you got anybody. Follow up with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you still don't got nobody after that, guess what? Go plant some seeds. Mm -hmm. Ask all your friends to study the Bible. Don't wait for them to come to a meeting. Don't wait for them to reach out to you. All of us may, must make sure that everyone in our ministry follows this process. It begins with the leaders. I'll get into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we've all got to follow this process. Jesus did it in Mark chapter 1. Right? We see Jesus flying solo. He's like, it's just me. Right. And then he goes and grabs four dudes. And it grows from there. Yeah. Wow. On, if bro. you don't know how to do it, or you don't feel like you're effective in it, then ask for help. Mm. The older disciples should do it with the younger disciples to show them how to do it. Especially in your discipling times. Right? For those of you that disciple people, or even those of you that are in discipling relationships, the question should be, hey, can you show me how to do this? Can you help me be more effective? In the Fresno Church, we have a culture 
that everyone is a worker. This is not an optional activity for a disciple. Go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Again, Jesus modeled the way. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. It says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. After John was put into prison, there was nobody else to take over the ministry. Mm. So Jesus understood, now's my time. Mm. Ready to rock and roll. He did his job. He did his work. Now it's my time to make it happen. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Now we obviously know from the other gospel accounts that this was not his first interaction with these four guys. But we do know that this was the first time that he walked up to them and said, hey, follow me. Let's go do it. Jesus called people to follow his example in being a fisher of men. I say this in the Bible studies all the time. I love the fact that Jesus is never going to ask us to do something that he himself did not do. He is the ultimate example. Never be afraid to call others to follow your example. If indeed you are an example. Now, if you're not an example, repent quickly and then call people to follow your repentance and your example. You don't got to get stuck in it. No need to get stuck in, woe is me, or I'm not this enough, or I'm not that enough. God called you. Mm, you're bro. already enough. That's right. God thinks you're enough, and so do I. Wow. Come on. Guys, this is why Frankie is leading this group. Mm, this is why. We, Ariel and I prayed hard. Mm. We prayed hard. We're like, who are we going to send uh, uh, to, to be Ariel and Eric in the Mingles ministry. Mm. And Frankie was, was like leading the campus ministry. Mm. Right? Well, but no, I thought Malik. No, no, no. It was like, like Frankie was out front leading the group. He was leading sharing times. He was setting wow. up Bible studies. He was getting into Bible studies and making it happen. I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second. Frankie doesn't go to school. That means Frankie's not a, not a campus student. Mm. That means Frankie's a single. Uh-huh. There it is. It was an epiphany of all epiphanies. I don't know why, why I didn't think of it sooner, but God just had it that way, right? Mm. He has a proven ability to operate this way in the campus, and now his task is to do the same here in the Mingles ministry. Mm. Come on. Here's the reality. The longer that you and I stay idle or unrepentant, the harder it will be to change. Yeah. Jesus made people into fishers of men. That doesn't mean he made them do it because we should all, if we're disciples of Christ, have the desire to do it. Maybe not the ambition to do it. Maybe not the skill set to do it well, but we should all have the ambition and the the mindset to go, I'm a disciple of Jesus. I need to be making disciples. It does not come naturally and it is not easy to to, it, it should, it, it does not come naturally and it's not easy for many of us. Mm. But the less that we do it, <laughs> the harder it's going to be to start it back up again. Mm. What do we become then? Pharisees. Mm. Religious people. Mm. We become like every other person in Fresno. Mm. Oh, dang. <laughs> and guys, here's the thing. No matter how long you've been a disciple... Mm. Our job is to always be training ourselves and others to fish for people. Amen. To be, be and be, to be making workers who keep working. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, who here is not a worker in the Mingles ministry? Now, rhetorical question. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, a name popped into your head. I guarantee you, every one of us, a named, it might be your name, it might be somebody else's name. Amen. Mm. Right? Now, we don't need to have attitudes towards ourselves. We don't need to have attitudes towards other people. But whether or not you're a worker or not is obvious. Mm. It's obvious. I know the answer, but do you? Mm. Come on, bro. Let's look at the number of studies in the Bible talk. Now, it's gradually increased over the past couple weeks. I think that's awesome. But with the amount of people 
and the amount of experience and how old disciples are in this room, it should be more. Mm. It should be more. We've got 56 study. And guys, this is a point of pride for me. Like good pride, boasting in the Lord. The amount of people we have in our church versus the amount of studies, like we're killing it. We're killing it. Right? And I think the prophetic message, if I can get kind of weird, wonky religious for a second, the prophetic message that Tim Kernan laid out for us at our inaugural service almost a year ago is true. We are punching well above our weight class. And this has been something that I've been able to boast in the Lord about this church since day one. And it's been phenomenal. And I think we've got some strengthening to do. This group is way more capable than how it's operating right now. And I know we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Come on, bro. Hmm. Did you share your faith this week? Hmm. Did you share your faith today? We are a daily evangelism church. Hmm. We are daily evangelism disciples. If you get one, I'm fired up. If you're the kind of person that wants to go for glory and you share your faith with 50 people, hey, go for it. Like, go for it. Hmm. But the reality, guys, in the, in, the, in, the, in the marrieds and singles ministry, we operate differently because we're not around a boatload of people like people are on campus. So what do we got to do? We got to share at the grocery store with the person in line. We got to share at the gas pump. We got to share with our friends when we go to their house. We got we to gotta share with everybody all the time, all over the place. Yes, sir. We have to be the ones that make a concerted effort to go find people to share your faith with. Mm-hmm. Has there been a day this week where you just didn't share your faith, but you just went to work, went home? Mm. I guarantee you probably. That should never be. Mm. Make it your ambition, guys, to it. I'm not going to, I'm not going, I'm not going to walk through the threshold of my door until I share my faith with at least one person. Mm-hmm. If not more, it's a muscle. And the more you flex this muscle, the stronger you will become. Mm. And the more easier it will be to build that habit. Yeah. Come on. Did you set up a Bible study? Did you have a visitor out to church or in a midweek yeah. this week? If not, then you need to look at how much of a worker you are. Now, this is not a time to get down and discouraged. This is a time to have healthy self-reflection and go, all right, yep. I see some flat sides. Or, you know what? I'm doing great. But I can always do better. Because God calls us to go from strength to strength to strength. Mm. There will always be seasons and there's an ebb and flow in the ministry where things are rocking and rolling and crazy and things are not. You know what I mean? But we should always be working. John 5 verse 17 says this. In his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always at work, at his work to this very day and I too am working. Mm. Jesus doesn't stop working. He never stops working. And amen to that because... I need Jesus to work. I had D time with, uh, with uh, uh, Gustavo earlier uh, today on the way here. We stopped in Selma, and I just walked up to him. He had his backpack ready. He was all ready for a slice and dice D time. And I said, hey, bro, let's just go on a prayer walk. I'm feeling a lot of stuff. Mm. And so we just went and prayed. Mm. We, just, we just went and prayed, you know what I mean? So there, there are, there's, an, there's an ebb and flow to ministry, and what I just realized is that there's a lot of weight and pressure on my shoulders that I just feel for everybody right now. It's just kind of the season that I'm in right now is just feeling the weight and the pressure of all that's going on, all the things that are going on in many other churches throughout the Thrive and the world and things that are going on over there in in, uh, in the Middle East and and Ukraine. and I mean, just all these things, you know what I mean? And I'm just feeling it, you know what I'm saying? And so the reality, guys, is is there's going to be an ebb and flow where you're feeling awesome and you're feeling great and you're on top of the world. There are other times where, man, I just, I just, I got to rely on God and just do what God's called me to do mm-hmm. and be the kind of man or woman that God's called me to be. Mm-hmm. Come on. The second thing is it's a time to water. It's a time to water. If you have someone that you're working with now, it's time to water that seed. And watering that seed, I don't know about you, but sometimes I could overwater. Yeah. I could drown the seed, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I can underwater. And I can like choke the seed a little bit Mm -hmm. by not giving it enough water. Mm -hmm. So what do we have to do? Pull them into your life. Pull them into your life. John chapter two, verse one says, on the third day, 
a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee, Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. It wasn't that they just showed up. They actually had been invited. Mm. So this means that Jesus was about doing what Jesus was doing, but he was a cool dude that people wanted to invite him to a wedding. So what does this mean? He was in people's lives. It was in, and we see this all throughout the Gospels, right? right? That he was in people's lives. It wasn't all about, let's talk about Jesus, let's talk about Jesus, let's talk about Jesus. Obviously talking about himself. But it, you know what I mean? It's not all about, let's study the Bible, study the Bible, study the Bible, yeah. right? Most people are looking for friendship, love, want to belong somewhere, they want a family. Mm. Now, studying the Bible is a huge part of that. We bring them into the kingdom family, and this family has a culture, this family has a way of operating that is around the Bible, mm. Right? But even in that, have a quiet time with them. Invite them over to your household, mm. right? It's not a seven-day Bible study challenge. Mm. Right? It's not just do the Christian works. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Bring them into your life. Bring them into your home. Bring them into your family. Bring them Ooh. into your group of friends. This is a big reason uh, for the fun activity after Bible talks. After you guys go do that sharing night, it's an awesome opportunity. You might not be, you don't want to invite somebody to a sharing night. It's kind of awkward and weird. But hey, all of us are getting together at 7.30 at Menchie's. All of us are getting together at 7.30 at Wasabi. Why don't you come and meet us? Wouldn't they have fun to play a game with y'all? You know what I mean? And just meet the family and kick it, right? It's a great opportunity. It's essential that our Bible talks and households are harmonious, loving, hospitable, and something people want to be a part of. Would you like to be a part of your Bible talk and live in your household if you were an outsider? Now, you're like, well, I, I'd love to be part of this group. This is awesome. But, mm. well, now you get to make it. We'll talk about that at the end. Mm. You guys get to make it what it is. Mm. If not, the question is, not what is Frankie doing about it? Not what is Chantel doing about it? What are you doing about it? Mm. What are you doing about it? Mm. Wow. Phone people the next day after meeting them and build a friendship with them. The focus is to make friends not end up with a list of numbers. Now, we are not interested in make friends, make disciples. Because that gets you nowhere. We make friends as we make disciples. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not either or. It's not let's do this and this is my homie and we've been hanging out for, you know, five years and now I ask him to study the Bible. No, 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 no. If they're your friends, they're going to know what you're all about from the jump. Right? And so we, what we, we do want to make them friends because ultimately, what does that mean? They're going to be our family. Mm -hmm. Not just my friends, but my family. Mm -hmm. Right? Bible says love never fails. Mm -hmm. Use the group to make them spiritual. Right? If somebody unspiritual comes into this group, and we're talking about God, we've got the Bible open, we're praying, we're singing songs, we're loving each other, we're talking about pure things, we're getting to know one another, guess what? They will rise to that level of character, or they will self-select out. If all the challenges come from one person, they'll feel unloved. We need to have multiple people building relationships with these Christians, right? If it's just you and one other sister or you and one other brother in that Bible study all the time, that's, that's sin. We need to bring other people into that group, into that time so that they feel comfortable around the family. You know what I mean? I, I'm trying to do this on campus all the time. I'm like, okay, I got to lead this one solo. Amen. But like, I'm like, Gonzalo, can you get in? Adam, can you get it? Frankie, can you get it? Lee, can you get it? Like, I'm like orchestrating, trying to get, and I'm, and even in the studies, Frankie knows this. I'm like dropping names. Like nobody's been, oh, you got to meet my friend. So-and-so. Hey, have you met so-and-so yet? Keep, right. I'm making connections so that when they see these people, they're like, oh, you're Malik. Oh, hey, you're Ethan. And then they run away. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> oh I'm just kidding. I, I love, love you, Ethan. I love you. Thank you. Ethan's about to cry. Eric, love you so much, bro. I love so much you. Love there. We also need to win them over to God and His kingdom, not to ourselves. Mm. Right? It can be really easy to win them over to ourselves and not to God. Mm. The way that you know whether you're winning somebody over to the kingdom and to God is if you try to bring somebody else in, they freak out. Or it's a hard time for them to like want to be around 
the rest of the family. Mm-hmm. And, like, and not, not just be around, like, come to church, but, like, be around as in, like, actually engage people. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Act as a quarterback and arrange their schedule by asking many people to initiate prayers with them, mm. initiate Bible okay. studies with them, fun times, all that. Right? It takes a village to bring people into the kingdom. Thirdly, it's a time to harvest. At some point, as you plant the seed, as you water those seeds, people will become ripe for harvest. Mm. The first question you have to ask is, do they feel the love of God? Do they feel the love of God? John 13, 34, 35 says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Mm. Now, I've always believed that we as a family of churches exemplify this in a pretty great way. And you guys have heard me share many, many stories about ICC, ICOC, blah, 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 blah. Um, But it's always awesome to do the kingdom study uh, or or to do the kingdom, not the kingdom, the discipleship study and get to this passage and to go, have you noticed, like, if they've come to church, if they've come to a meeting, hey, have you noticed something different? He's like, yeah. Yeah, you guys are like fired up all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you guys, you guys are like, like you guys are giving hugs to people and stuff. Like, like yeah, my old, my old church men, they're they're not like nobody's getting into my life there. I'm like, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But guys, here's the reality. That's not every church, even in the ICC. Mm. Mm. Come on, bro. Mm. We have to fight to keep this kind of love in the kingdom. Right. Yeah. People are not attracted by sacrifice. Mm. They're not attracted by hard work. They're not Mm. attracted by hours of evangelism. Now, it takes sacrifice, hard work, and hours of evangelism to help them become disciples and to build a church. Mm. But they're not attracted by that. Is your study at the point where they see a life that they want to live? I think that begins with, do they see the life they want to live in you? Mm. Not that everything's awesome in your life. Because it's not. Mm. I know this because I know you. Mm. And you know this because you know me. (laughs) It doesn't mean that everything's awesome. But, like I was praying uh, earlier today uh, with Gustavo, it's like, and even almost all day today, it's like, I want joy. Like, in the midst of all the drama, in the midst of all the pressure, in the midst mm. of all these things, I just want joy. Mm. Like, I'm going to feel it one way or the other, y'all. I mean, the reality is a life of a disciple is tough. Mm. Yeah. And it's not going to yeah. get any easier. <laughs> but in the midst of that, I want to believe Psalm 119, 1 and 2. I want to believe, I want to believe that, I want to drink the Kool-Aid that I've been giving other people. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, come on. I want to I wanna have the same... I want to believe it. Not just believe it because the Bible says it, but I want to believe it because I'm living it. You know what I mean? We've got to show them the life that we are living. And again, this is why we've we've made some changes in this group and and operated it in a certain way so that it can be that fun time. Mm. Yeah, we're sharing our faith. Yeah, we're building momentum. Yeah, we're trying to mm. get people that we're sitting about with and evangelizing these kinds of things. But also, why have that fun time? Because we want to invite people into a life of fun and excitement. I mm. love the singles ministry. I loved it. Uh, mm. I, was just going, I, I was going through my voice memos today, and I found a lesson that Ariel and I preached at the last GLC about singles ministry. Mm-hmm. And guys, when I say it, I mean good. it. Like, like, if, if, if God said, Eric, sorry, the evangelist is not happening anymore. You're out. No more church. But we're going to give you the, a ministry that you, want, that you want to lead. Where do you want to go? I'm like, send me to a singles ministry. I don't care where it is. Oh, man. But you're married. I don't care, man. Send me to a singles ministry. Ariel and I, singles ministry, done. <laughs> love the singles ministry. Amen. And I love being married. <laughs> so I love the marriage ministry, too. Amen. <laughs> But the Mingles ministry is like, it, it's, the, it's the coolest, mm. most awesome ministry, I think, in, in the church. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Now, I love the campus too. Mm. But I love the Mingles more. Ooh. Oh, 
Ooh. as a ministry, not the people, oh. Oh. not the people. Hey guys, love always trusts y'all. Come on. You guys, you guys. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Don't turn into couples. Ah. Gonna, gonna put that in the group meeting. <laughs> Ah, yeah, don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> Shram said. I heard what you said. There we go. But guys, if we're not modeling a life to the full with Jesus and his family that is adventurous and exciting, then they will not see what God wants them to see. Come on, bro. This is why we breathe out faith. We inspire them, not just with the Bible studies, but with our lives and with love. Amen? Amen. 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 Jesus knew that. He knew and he saw people from a distance, and he knew this. Matthew eleven nineteen. it says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by our deeds. When people on the outside were looking at Jesus, they saw a dude who was loving the party. He was loving life. Mm. Homeboy is hanging out. He's eating and he's drinking. He loved him some food. He loved him some lacrosse. Or LaCroix, LaCroix, or whatever you want to call it. LaCroix. I don't know that he loved Manu, though, man. That's tough. That's tough. Chorizo, absolutely. But not Manu, Manu though. I don't know about that. But here's the thing, guys. We, we, we want to be careful not to pull the trigger until they've been to church and seen the love. And seen the love. So number one, do they see the love? Number two, do they see they are lost? Do they see they are lost? Sometimes we could study the Bible with people for a long time and they think they're cool. They just think they're not a disciple. But they still think they're cool. You got a couple of those guys right now that we're studying the Bible with. And it's like, this dude doesn't get it. I'm at the kingdom study and this dude doesn't get it. I'm at the L&D study and this guy still doesn't get it. So it's like, all right, well, we got to backtrack a little bit, right? Many of our studies do not see themselves as lost, and so they do not commit, and we get frustrated with them. So here's what we have to be willing to do. We have to be willing to speak the truth in love. Right. No one can be motivated to be saved if they think they're already saved. So here's what we do. If you're at the Seeking God study, ask them what the difference is between being religious and being righteous. Ask them questions that reveal their heart. Ask them why they think the Pharisees were lost if they read their Bibles, prayed, gave money, evangelized, and attended their church regularly. Mm. Challenge them to do something at the end of the study that they are not doing already to expose them. In love, of course. See if they are willing to change, such as invite their friends to church, buy a Bible, Change their schedule for the kingdom. Again, we've got to be careful not to, you know, yank the, the fruit before it's ripe, yeah. right? So I'm going to invite them to church. I'm going to invite them to study the Bible. Obviously, I'm going to invite them to have quiet times and things like that. And I'm going to follow up with them afterwards, right? But we can challenge that. It should be inspirational, but also give them a little bit of that challenge. Right. In the Word of God study, ask them how often they read their Bible. Just from here, I met with a guy in Kerman, campus kid in Kerman. He goes to Clovis Community College, but lives in Kerman. I'm like, that's crazy. But anyway, uh, I was asking him, hey, man, so how are the quiet times going? Oh, man. Yeah, I lost my Bible in my notebook. I was really frustrated, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't disbelieve that he didn't, but I'm like, dude, what's your phone? Hmm. Like half the time we're doing Bible studies with him, having a physical Bible. The other half we're doing them with the phone. So does the homie have an excuse? No. 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 no so I gave him a little one-two punch in the Word of God. What is that? Mm. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Have they ever read the whole Bible? Right? Again, most people are going to say no. So what are you doing? You're exposing these things. Now, you're not like poking. You're not poking at them. Wow. You haven't read the whole Bible? Dummy, what's your problem? No, we're not doing that. But we are, we're bringing these up so that we have an angle of going, hey, what do you think that would be important? If not, how can they know that they're following what it says if they haven't read it? 
Ask what was the last thing they changed from the Bible. Send verses and expect them to read them. Hmm. In discipleship, really nail down if they are lost or saved. Now, this isn't a hill that we're going to die on, but man, we should be willing to, to, to walk around a little bit of wounded warrior on this. Mm. We should push the issue. It shouldn't be so easy for them to go, yeah, I'm a disciple. Okay, cool. Well, I catch, guess I'll catch him at L&D. No. Really? Okay. Let's talk about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ask them who disciples them. Ask them about their church growth. Mm-hmm. Ask how many strangers they spoke to about Jesus this week or last week. Evangelize in front of them. If they say they're disciples, sweet, hey, why don't you come share, right? We should, if we're ever doing Bible studies in a public setting, or like at a Denny's or something, what should we do? Always share with the waitress. Always share with the waiter. Always share with the host on your way out. Mm. Why? Because it exposes them that you're the real deal and they're not. Mm. Because we all know they're not doing it. In my 24 years of being a disciple, I've met one disciple. He just hadn't gotten baptized. He was a total Apollos. It was nuts. Wow. Wow. I've said about with thousands of men. Thousands. Meh, probably about a thousand. Wow. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I have never met one disciple. That doesn't mean they're not out there, because the Bible says there are. But past performance predicts future behavior, so I can say, all right, chances are this dude, even though he says he is, is not. And we're not dumb. We know. <laughs> so evangelize in front of him. Straight after the study, just like Jesus did with his disciples. In the light and darkness study, when studying L&D with religious people, always do a timeline first. Now, I know I didn't teach anybody a timeline um, in the the first principles, uh, but if you want to know, ask me and I will walk you through it. (laughs) Ask them what their belief about baptism is before you do the study and if and why they did it. Ask them how they believe they got their sins forgiven. If necessary, go on their church website and show them that what their old church uh, or present church believes. We typically do this in the kingdom study. Force the salvation issue. So, number one, do they feel the love? Number two, do they know that they're lost? Number three, are they inspired? Mm. All of this should be done with inspiration. John 15 verse 8 says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Baptisms inspire baptisms. Mm. Do you know why Gonzalo got baptized? Besides the fact that we studied the Bible with him and he wanted to get baptized. He saw, he saw um, Kai get baptized. He saw Chris get baptized. In fact, Adam was very, very uh, uh, moved by Kai's baptism and Chris's baptism. Or, mm-hmm. yeah, Kai's baptism and Chris's baptism. Wow. Oh, baptisms inspire baptisms. So do testimonies. So do birthday parties. Sending people to GNN and conversations with young Christians about their conversions. They also keep people faithful when they are weak and doubting. Mm-hmm. These relationships. Set them a goal of when to get baptized and give them vision. Mm. Make it special. Special place. Or with their friends and family, right? For sisters, right? When we're able to do this at our house, Ariel grabs a rose and shakes it and puts it in the, you know, the rose petals and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I mean, bros, if you want to do that too, that's awesome. Amen. <laughs> Work hard to make it an unforgettable memory. Mm. Go through our website and family of churches. Show them the videos and our history. Get them to listen to specific sermons. Like, man, I really enjoyed this sermon by so-and-so. Check it out. You know what I mean? Show them your sermon notes. Mm. Which might mean that some of us need to actually take sermon notes. Mm. Sorry, I just needed to say that. (laughs) If you're fired up about your church, the sermon series that I work so hard to put together, then they will too. Mm. They'll be fired up about it. Right? Let me ask a question. I'm glad he's not here. But why does Park keep coming? Park... He likes, yeah. the, he likes the church. Yeah. yeah. He and he told me that the, the disciple is very humble. Yeah. <laughs> he also likes the way he preached. Yeah. 
Now, he likes the sisters too, amen. But, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, he, he, is, he is fired up about the preaching. He's fired up about the dynamic. He uh, loves, awesome. he loves the church. Well, yeah. He sees the truth. That's right. He sees the truth being lived out, and mm. he's inspired. Yeah. Now, does that mean he's going to make it? God knows. Right. We'll find out on Sunday how it starts. Wow. We're going to get together with him on Sunday, so be praying for that. Yeah. But guys, get them living and enjoying the life of a disciple before they become one. Mm. Give them a life they do not want to lose to motivate them to change. Mm. Finally, my family, is we've got to take hold of your ministry. Take hold of your ministry. Matthew 11, verse 12, says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subject to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. Now, I don't like this new translation of it. The old King James that Rocky likes to, likes to, listen, like, like, likes to read says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men and women lay hold of it. Mm. Wow. No ministry advances powerfully and permanently unless you take hold of it. Mm. Every army needs a commander. Every country needs a president or a leader. Right. Every family needs a father. Every ministry needs a Jesus-like evangelist or women's ministry leader, even if it's in training. Mm. Every Bible talk needs a Bible talk leader. Every successful team needs someone to push them, a call to call them to greatness and division, to set goals, to mm. be it to win a championship or grow a group by. Come on. Make goals, be specific, achievable and accountable goals. Mm. This is why Frankie and Chantel are here. Mm. Come on. God through Ariel and I have given them the authority to lead this group. Yes. My expectation is that you would follow them as you would follow Christ and me. Come on. Amen. But they can only do so much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They can only do so much. They can do everything right and be the best leaders in training that they can be. Mm. But still the group will not go. Mm. Mm. Why? Because the reality is, Matthew 13, 58 said, and he did not do many miracles there because there was a lack of faith. Mm. Mm. Miracles do not happen when we lack faith. What is faith? Wow. It's belief put into action. Mm. You can believe all you want, but not work. Guess what? No faith. You can work as hard as you want without belief. Guess what? No faith. That's not faith. Wow. So how are you going? How are you doing with your personal goal at the moment? Mm. How is your planting of seeds? Mm. How is your watering of those seeds? How is your harvesting of those seeds? Have you taken hold of your personal ministry? A leader can take hold of the entire group as a ministry, but each and every one of us is disciples. This is what I love about the, about the church, is that it's not all on the leader. right? This is the pastor's way versus the Jesus way, right? In the mm -hmm. discipleship study. Yep. Mm -hmm. The way the world gets won isn't just because Eric is up there preaching a sermon and making disciples all day. But that's what you get paid to do, right? Yes, that's true. But for 24 years, before I got paid to do it, I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. I had to take hold of my own personal ministry. And each of us has to do the same. Come on. This is on both ends of the ministry. Not just, not just with bringing people into the kingdom, but also keeping people in the kingdom. With all this focus on planting, watering, and harvesting, it can also be easy to then not focus on those that are already in the kingdom. Taking care of one another. Mm. Are you being discipled weekly? Are you being discipled well? If not, speak up. It's not just your discipler's job to make sure that you get discipling. Mm. It's your job to make sure. You could have the worst discipler in history. And you know what? He's still going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's saved by the blood of Jesus. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Now, eventually, if he keeps being a derelict discipler, you know, and doesn't repent, then, amen, that could be a salvation issue. But for the most mm. part, guys, like, I could be the worst uh, uh, pastor, preacher. I could be the worst one. 
And you know what? I'm fired up because I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. I'm still going to heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank you, bro. Uh, we'll be there, bro. Amen. <laughs> but it's not just up to me. It's up to you. It's up to all of us. Mm. Do you use the scriptures every day in your life? Do you have a set thing to grow in what? Do you have, do you have a, a set thing to grow in that makes you not just feel like you're changing, but you can also see it and others can too? Growing people, mm. guys, don't fall away. Mm. That's right. But discipling times are not enough. Everyone needs multiple relationships. Are you living in an inspiring household? Or do you have fun and inspiring family times for those of us that are married? If you're married, how are your discipling and planning times going with your spouse? Hmm. Are you going out on dates with other brothers and sisters? Married? Are we going out on dates with our wives? <clears throat> Amen. These are the ways that we help our fellow disciples with their kingdom dreams and their life goals. Right? Like, it, it's awesome to be able to make some of these con- cool connections. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, one of the cool things that I was able to do when I was in Mexico City was meet up with a, a couple uh, uh, couples from L.A. And uh, I'm like, hey, I got this guy Frankie in, in my ministry. He does music. Check him out. Boom, boom, boom. You know, I'm sending him, you know, Savage X Productions and all that good stuff. Right. And he's like, yes. and I was like, hey, like, you're AMS, like, in, in London. I'm like, hey, you're AMS. Like, who can I connect him with over there? Oh, you got to connect him with this guy. Blah, blah, blah. What does he want to do? Production? Oh, I got this guy. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm setting him up. Wow. Let's go. Frankie. Right? Now, perfect. you can't tell me that's not, that's not going to go a long way to help Frankie stay faithful in the Lord. Mm. Even if he chooses not to do that as a dream. But why? I'm helping him dream. Mm. Come on. You know what I mean? Come on. We got to do that with one another. Bind up the weak. Know who they are and set your mind on strengthening them in our relationship. Pull other disciples into studies. Again, especially those that are weak. Now, if you get pulled into a study, don't automatically think that somebody thinks you're weak. (laughs) Just be fired up. You're getting pulled into a study. Guys, being a disciple is an action sport. Yeah. True that. It is not a sit and get. Yes, sir. It is not a sit and get. And this group, this call is not optional. Mm. Mm. It's not just a good idea. We are not another religious group that meets up weekly. We are the very kingdom of God. Come on, bro. Wow. And that is who you are representing to the people in your community. Come on. We are an army advancing the territory of the kingdom of God, taking it back against the forces of evil. And oh my gosh, have we seen a lot of evil this last couple weeks. Right. Mm. Right. We are a family who loves, cares, and protects one another and wants to grow and expand our family legacy into the next generation. Come on. So my family, now is the time to what? Plant. Come on. Now is the time to water. Now is the time to harvest. Now is the time to take hold of your ministry. And now is the time for forceful advancement, not weak, wishful thinking. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love you guys very much.